Hello, hello, hello. I am Elma Kirkwood with Workforce Solution for Tarrant County. I'm going to give you some interviewing tips today. And what we're going to do is just run over some tips. And I'm pretty sure you have been uh, in interviews and you probably have learned different tips. I'm just going to share you some from experience, uh, what you do. I always like to start off with you being confident in yourself, knowing who you are and representing yourself walking into that interview saying, this is the job or career for me. You have to have confidence. You have to know who you are. You wanna be able to uh, know your skills, the position that you are applying for, and the position is going to be yours. So we're going to get started. If you have any questions, you can ask, or you can wait to the end of the presentation. You can put them in the chat box. But I'm really going to stress that you need to have confidence in yourself. Interviewing is um, you're walking into the unknown. You don't know who's going to uh, be interviewing you. You don't know what questions they're going to ask you. So you're going to be wondering what's going to happen in this interview. And that can be scary too, really scary. Uh, I remember when I was going in on my interviews, when I was applying them, I had heard all kinds of tips that scared me half to death. All the questions that I prepared myself for wasn't even asked. So you have to be prepared for those that are known and unknown questions, okay? So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All righty. Okay. Interviewing tips, things to think about before you go on the interview. And even if you've heard any other tips that I'm not sharing today, if you want to share some of those tips, you are welcome to, okay? My first thing is to research the company. Look at some companies that you may want to work for. Check those companies out. Uh, start by researching all the companies that you're interested in that are hiring in the positions that you are looking for, okay? And you can do a research. You know how we get on Google and we put in a company and you can research and see if those companies that you have selected that you think you would like to work for, research those companies. Understand the key information about the company you're interviewing with can help you go into your interview with confidence. And you're going to hear me say that word a lot because I want you to have the confidence. Using the company website, social media posts, and recent press releases will provide a solid understanding of the company's goals and how your background make you a great fit. And that's what interviewing is about. You going in there really bragging on yourself and talking about the skills that you have, knowing that you are the person for this position. You don't want the interviewer to think about nobody but you after you walk out of that interview, okay? Practice, practice, practice. Because like I said, interviewing is very scary because you never know who you're gonna be interviewing with. Or is it going to be a panel interview where there's two or three more people you're going to be interviewing in front of? Is it going to be a group interview? Because once the pandemic over, they'll probably go back to face to face. You don't know if it's going to be a telephone interview, may even be an email interview. There are so many ways now to interview you. And I know you all, if you've been on the interview recently, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Everything is on Zoom now. And you probably had Zoom interviews. So you have to prepare and keep yourself confident in your skills, knowing those skills and presenting those skills and talking like, hey, this is my job. This is my career. Motivating yourself in this position that you are seeking to be hired from. So you want to practice. Prepare your answers to the common question. Tell me about yourself. This is one of them that they normally use as an icebreaker when you come in. Okay, tell me a little bit about yourself or why are you interested in this role with our company? And that's really why I stress, research the company. 
Know the products at the company. You don't want to go in if you're interviewing with a, a Mary Kay products and you don't know that she makes eye makeup, facial stuff, and you walking in there talking about another company that's named Mary Kay. It throws the whole interview off. Know the company, know the products, and then have that confidence that you can what? Talk to that person, the interviewer. Tell me about yourself. Now, some people get this mixed up with talking about your personal life. Yeah, in a way, but it's basically talking about you in the position that you are applying for. You're talking about you and your skills. You're talking about also your personality, how well you get along with people. You are a team player, but talk about your skills. Brag on yourself. The idea is to quickly communicate who you are and what value you will bring to the company and the role. It's your personal elevator pitch. So you're going in there talking about yourself and you don't want to go on and on and on. Maybe a good 60 minutes. And we used to say two minutes, but maybe a minute now that you can, you know, tell a little bit about yourself. Stay away from your children. Stay away from religion, anything like that. Focus on you and the position that you are applying for. Now, another tip is you should come prepared to discuss your salary expectation. And this is going to go back to what? Researching again. Researching the company, knowing the position that you're applying for, researching and see what is the going salary in that position. Because some job posting will not give you a salary. So you got to go in there knowing the salary. You want to have your high and what is your lowest amount that you would take. So if your highest is 80 and your lowest is uh, maybe 75, then that's what you're going to deal with, okay? That one. You want to be able to not ping pong. And what I mean by ping pong, you're saying, oh, I'll take 80. He said, well, I was thinking about maybe 72. Oh, no, I'll take 75. You want to go in with your highest and your lowest. If it's in between there, you go with that. And then you maybe ask, well, when are your promotions? How often do you promote? Or do you give raises? That's when you can do that. You never bring up salary in the interview. Let them bring it up. He who mentions money first loses unless you know how to negotiate, okay? Read the job posting, and I stress this. Just because you pick up a job posting, and it may read the title that you're looking for because the majority of all postings are going to have a job title. This is the position that the companies are looking for. So just because you see a job title that sounds like the position that you are looking for, read that because companies have different titles for their position that they're hiring for. So you want to read the job description you may even want to print it out so you can underline specific skills and what the employees are looking for. And then ask yourself, do I have the skills that this job description is printed out for me? Do I have these skills? If you do, go for it, okay? Think about examples from your past and current work that align with these requirements. Think about what did you do in your past job or even in your job now, if you're looking for a new job while you're working, think about what you did and how you was able to complete it. Think about those things, okay? Now we're going to uh, talk about the STAR method, okay? Use the STAR method to structure answers to behavioral questions, okay? Now, Sometimes you may walk into an interview and they may ask you to tell a story or they may ask you a behavior question like this. What you want to do is get prepared and practice because this will go in also if they ask you to give a story. This is what we call the story method. It's going to, you're going to be able to tell the situation, the task, the action, and the results. So what is the contact of your story? And remember, you're talking about yourself. So we was working on a six-month contract for a high-value client when our agency merged with another larger firm. That is going to be the introduction on this one. 
What was your role in this situation? These are questions that you're asking yourself to prepare your story, okay? It was my role to lead the transition for my group while also communicating with our clients to keep the project on track. What action did you take? I set up weekly check-ins with the clients to update them on the progress of the merger. This cemented an important level of trust between us. I also had regular one-on-ones with each person on the team, both to assess how they were handling the change and to make sure we would meet our deadline. What was the result of this? We ended up completing the project on time, meeting all of their specifications. It was incredibly rewarding to navigate a lot of change and succeed under pressure. So this is like when you walk in and they said, well, can you tell me a story? You can use the STAR method. If it is a behavioral question they ask, you can still use the STAR method, but remember, you are telling the story, you're giving them the situation, how you got started, the task, what was that, and the action that you took, and what was the results on it. So you might want to practice on that just in case. Not saying that they're going to ask you this, but you always want to be prepared for the unknown in interviewing. A friend will be helpful. Friends are good to practice with or even getting in the mirror and practicing and seeing. Friends can watch your body language. Uh, they can, if they're really honest, they'll tell you, well, you didn't really answer that question right. Maybe you uh, need to put a little more emphasis on the question, the answer. So you wanna be able to get a friend to sit down, give them some questions to ask and just answer those questions. Don't be like, uh, uh, uh. I think, uh, no, we don't want any of that. That's the reason why you want to practice, speak, listen, and keep listening. So you can answer the question, what the person asked you, you'll be able to answer that, okay? If you do not understand the question, ask them to repeat it or maybe give you an example, okay? So practicing your answers out loud, is an incredibly effective way to prepare. Say them to yourself or ask a friend to help run through questions and answers. You will find you gain what? Confidence as you get used to saying the word. Confidence, you have to have confidence. Do not down yourself. You want to motivate yourself. References, now this one is very important. You always want to have good references at least three to five references. These are people that can talk about your skills. They can talk about you as a good employer. They can talk about your personality, but stay away from your family life. Like you have three or four children. Uh, you always late for work, but you are a good employer. You, you do the work, but sometimes you're late all the time. You don't want anybody saying anything negative about you. So you want to make sure that you screen your references. References should be on a page by itself. Just in case you have to change references, you can do that. Never put your references on the page with your resumes. Put it on a separate sheet, references. Get their name, correct name, not nicknames. Your, their correct name, uh, address, emails, telephone numbers. Get all that. How long have you been knowing them? Because that could be a question that we can ask you. How long have you been knowing your references? You want to make sure all of that. Give your reference a resume. Go over the resume with them. Talk about you as a person. You have a good personality. And you don't go on and on. Tell them just to do it maybe like a minute and then get off of that conversation, okay? And if the person do ask if they have children, and you a little skeptical answer that, you could either say, yes, they do have children, but their children are already in school or something like that, okay? Or they're already taken care of. That would not be a problem for them with this position, okay? So you want to prepare them and then let the references know. Ask the reference, can you use them as a reference? Never put people down and you have not asked. 
You do not want your references to be caught off guard. Somebody called them up and they'd be like, who, what, when? I haven't talked to them in five years. You do not want that when a company calls a reference. So please ask the people if you can use them for a reference, let them know the company that may call them and have them to be ready when they do call, okay? And it's always good to get some good references. They say here, please do not use your family or friends because they know you pretty good and they may say too much. But if you have a good coworker, good manager or supervisor, talk to them, make sure. Now, if you're having a problem with your manager and supervisor on your last job, you may not want to use them. You may want to get a good coworker or something because you never want anybody to say anything bad about you. References have caused people good jobs because people talk too much or they said negative things. And the company, even though you had the great experience, the skills for this position, your references gave you a bad review and mm -mm, some companies will not hire you. So please screen your references very carefully. Examples of your work is gonna go back to the previous screen that I used a few minutes ago, the behavior uh, question, the star. This is similar to that. You're going to make sure that you can give them an example of your work. Uh, what did you do in the past? You might wanna talk about that. How if you was a bookkeeper or some, or administrative assistant, a teacher or whatever, CNC, you know, whatever your job position is, Talk about that, okay? You want them to know that you know the position that you're applying for. You want them to know the specific work that you did on that. And then talk with confidence with that. Talk with it so they will be convinced that you know exactly what you are talking about, that you are familiar with it. Go with it, okay? Your smart questions. Prepare smart questions for your interview. Interviews are a two-way street. And what we're saying here is you go into the interview, you're going to interview the interviewer yourself. You're going to be watching the body language. You're going to watch how they talk. You're going to watch how they treat you in the interview. And you're going to be able to say to yourself, do I really want to work for this person? You want to make sure that they treat you with respect as you are treating them. So don't go in there thinking that you're going to be the only one being interviewed. You are going to be able to interview the interviewer as well. So these could be some of the questions that you may want to ask the interviewer. Can you explain some of the day-to-day -day responsibility this job entails? What department does this team work with regularly? If I were in this position, how will my performance be measured? So you can prepare, use some questions that you might want to ask the interviewer. Now, interviewing is listening. If the person has already answered your question, please do not repeat it again. You want them to know that you are a good listener and that you listen very well. And don't repeat the question. If something that you do not understand, then you may be able to ask that question or ask them to give you an example. But it's always good to have some questions ready just in case. Your attire. This is another good thing that you want to check on. You don't want to overdress and you want to dress accordingly to the position. And there are some positions that you may have to wear a suit. There are some positions you just do business casual. And that's going to be based on the position that you are applying for. Again, research the company, research the company, <clears throat> and check out. Now, sometimes you might be able to call the receptionist and ask them, and they may be able to tell you. Or again, there might be a recruiter or somebody that's been working with you that can tell you how to dress. You don't always have to wear a three-piece suit, but get your attire ready the night before. Uh, Everything has to be decent in order to build up what? Your confidence. And dressing can also help build up your confidence. Your resumes, you want to make sure that you bring copies of your resume. Get you a portfolio. 
Make sure that you take at least five copies of your printed resume on clean paper. And you want to give that just in case they ask and you are being interviewed by more than one person, then you have that resume for you, okay? You want to highlight different things on your resume that you want to go over. So make sure that you are very familiar with your resume, what is on your resume, memorize it. Don't pull out your resume and start reading it. You ought to know everything on that resume. You need to know that. OK, because this is a picture of you on paper. That's your resume. So you should know it. Bring that. Also bring you a pen. And you can have some notebook paper in there just in case you want to take notes. Please, if you're bringing your phone, put it on silent or vibrate. You do not want your phone ringing in the interview. OK, you want to make sure everything is targeted on you and that interview because you already wondering what is unknown so it can become known, okay? And then you want to date that, date your interview tab. Date it, the time that you had it, try to get you a business card so you can even thank you, thank them, send a thank you note to them, email them, even call them if you have to, okay? So this way they will know that you really appreciate it the time, because it takes time to prepare for an interview. You're preparing at the same time the interviewer is preparing as well. So you have to uh, be able to do that. You have to be able to know who it is, what you're going to be talking to. So get your business card and send them a thank you note. Okay. Now, after the interview, like I said, on your resume, date it. So you can follow up on that maybe a week or two later. You might want to follow up just to see the status of if they hired anyone or you're still in the running or something like that, okay? Never arrive at an interview late. Please do not do that. It tells the company that you're probably going to arrive to work late. You're not interested. You just signed up for the interview. You never want the interviewer to think negative of you. So please plan your schedule so that you can arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. Map out your route to the interview location so you can be sure to arrive on time. Consider doing a practice run. You know where it is, you have the address. Go to it the night before or two days before. Time yourself, time yourself just in case for traffic, because if you're interviewing in the morning time, it may be doing the traffic time or in the afternoon. Traffic is so congested sometimes. So you may want to add at least 10 to 15 minutes if it's in the afternoon or in the morning. But practice run, go there, see where the place is, scope it out, and then make sure that you get there at least 15 minutes early so you can breathe. You can relax for a few minutes, okay? If you're taking the public transportation, identify backup plan if there are delays or closures. When you arrive early, use the extra minutes to observe workplace dynamics. Look at the surroundings. Your first impression is always what they say is your lasting impression. So you want to make sure that your impression starts with confidence, knowing who you are and your skills that you're going to bring to the table. You always want to make a great first impression. So don't forget the little things. Shine your shoes. Make sure your nails are clean and tidy. Look at your nails. Make sure they're clean and tidy. Men, that go for you too. Make sure that your nails are clean and tidy. You're not wearing a lot of um, jewelry and all of that. You never want anything to take from your interview. You don't want them to be looking at your jewelry and all that. So you want to make sure that everything is based on you talking and expressing your skills in the position that you are applying for, okay? So check your clothes. Make sure that there are no holes, no stains, no pet hair, and loose thread. Okay, you could be playing with the dog on the way out the door. 
Check and make sure that there are no hair, pet hair on your outfit. Check it. Get in front of the mirror. Check yourself out, okay? Display a confident body language and a smile throughout. Respect. Treat everyone you encounter with respect. This includes people on the road and in the parking lot. Don't get road rage. People might fly in front of you real quickly, make you upset. Don't take that road rage into that interview. You don't want to do that. Maybe they cut you off and you got upset about that. Uh, take that out, okay? You want to be able, even in the parking lot, there's security speak. Just speak to them or wave at them. Okay, your front desk when you walk up, speak to her. Hi, my name is Elma. I'm here to interview with Darius. And um, I'm excited. You know, you just want to show good body language when you walk up to the front desk, okay? Treat everyone you don't know as though they're the hiring manager. Even if they aren't your potential employee, you might ask for their feedback. Now, we used to have uh, managers to come back and say, hey, what do you think about this person? Did they speak to you? What do you think about their body language? And that person could have been rude to somebody and you didn't get the job. So treat people with respect because this is the position that you are looking to get. Your body language. Sometimes we talk with our body language. You don't want to go in there frowned up. You don't want to go in there uh, like you don't want to be bothered. So you want to be able to practice confidence. You walk in with a good personality. You walk in with your confidence saying, I'm here to interview and I'm going to have a great interview. Even if I'm nervous, I don't want to show it, but you're going to get, all right, it's going to be okay. You got to talk to yourself. Sit or stand tall with your shoulders back. Before the interview, take a deep breath. And exhale slowly to manage feeling of anxiety and encourage self-confidence. When the pandemic is over, the interviewer should extend their hand first to initiate a handshake. Even after the pandemic, you might still walk in and they may not even offer you a handshake. Don't get upset. You are not there for the handshake. You are there for the interview. So don't let that distract you because some people just do not like handshake, especially even after COVID is gone, they still may not offer you a handshake, okay? All right, so you don't want to give them one of those crush handshakes that will break their fingers, just a nice little handshake and move on, okay? This is going to be a win-win. You're going to win them over with you being genuine. You don't go in there trying to act like somebody else. Just be yourself, have the confidence in yourself, and your conversation can help the employee easily relate to you, okay? You don't have to change your voice and all of that, you know, and acting all that. Just be yourself, okay? Showing positivity with a smile and upbeat body language can help keep the interview light and constructive. While it can seem tempting to embellish on your skills and accomplishments, interviewers find honesty, refreshing, and respectable. If you don't know how to type 50 words per minute, don't say that you can do that because they can easily take you over to the computer and say, type me 50 words per minute, and you up there pecking. That doesn't work. You do not want to lie in the interview or allow your resume. Just answer the question, Focus on your key strength and why your background make you uniquely qualified for the position. Tips. Tie your answers back to your skills and accomplishments. With any question you answer, it is important that you tie your background to the job by providing examples of solutions and results you achieve. Use every opportunity to address the requirements listed in the job description. If you notice, we are repeating a lot because these are things that are important in the interview. Read over the application very carefully. Answer the questions on the application. 
If it does not apply to you, put N slash A or draw a line over it. Always take your black or blue ink pen, but read over application, read over your resume, and be prepared to answer any questions that they may ask from your resume or your application. Know your answers, concise, and focus. Your time with each interviewer is limited, so be mindful of rambling, okay? You're there to get as much information as you can about the position, the persons that work in the company, and some companies may even give you a tour, so you want to be prepared for the tour as well. Practicing your answers beforehand can help keep you focused. Do not, and I stress, do not speak negatively about your previous employer. Companies want to hire problem solvers who overcome tough situations. If you are feeling discouraged about your current job, focus on talking about what you gained from what experience and what you want to do next. Never go in there talking or bad mouthing your previous employer. Maybe you and that manager supervisor couldn't get along good. So if they ask you how did you and your last supervisor got along, you can either say, you know, we was able to handle a lot of problems that we didn't agree on, but we did agree to disagree and we came up with a good answer to, uh, and resulting to a good answer on how to complete this project. So you don't wanna go in there and say, you know, me and my manager said, we never got along. I just did not like him. Everything that I tried to do, he or uh, she always had to say something negative about it. They never let me express myself. You don't want to do anything like that. You want to go in and talk on the positive things. Now, you're finished with the interview, and sometimes you go back and you go and critique and, and think about what did I do? You can critique yourself, but don't critique yourself because like I said in the beginning, all interviews are different. They may ask different questions. They may not ask any of the questions that you, you practice on. So don't you know critique yourself too hard. When the interview is over, give yourself the best chances of moving forward by doing the following. Ask about the next step. Ask your interview, it, it is appropriate to ask either your interviewer, your hiring manager, or your recruiter about what you should expect next. This will likely be a follow-up email with results from your interview, additional requirements like an assignment, a reference list, or another interview. So they may call you back in for a second or maybe a third interview. But the only thing about that, that does not guarantee you're going to get the job, okay? so. You still want to practice. If they still call you in on the second or the third interview, you're still going to go in there with confidence. You're still going to go in there like your life depends on it because it does, okay? So make sure that the interviewer is going to get back with you. Again, like I said, get your business card. Email them. Thank them for the time for the interview. Follow up. Put a date on there. When did you interview? These are things, and most of all, after the interview, some interviewers will tell you the next step. Okay, we're going to contact you, or they might just say, okay, we're going to get back with you, or you never know. Just be prepared, okay? Ask for the business card of each person you speak with. If they're doing a panel interview, or if they're doing a second or third interview with you, try to get you a business card so you can stay in touch with them. If you interview in the morning, send your follow-up email the same day. If you interview in the afternoon, the next morning is fine. Make certain that each email is distinct from the others using the notes you took during the conversation. Okay? And that ends my little tips. If you all have any kind of questions, you can ask at this time. Men ask me, well... Be ready to try our best to answer those questions. But again, like I said, keep your confidence up because there is a job out there or a career out there with your name on it. And all you're doing is preparing yourself for that next step. Don't give up. Are there any questions?
you could unmute yourself and ask the questions or feel free to just submit them on the chat and we'll just read it off there. Thank you guys for participating today. I Thank have you, a Alma. Question, please. I have a question, please. Uh -huh. Yeah, is it okay to send any letter after you have received a rejection letter? You know, some people do that. They still thank them, you know, for taking the time out to interview. So that's uh, that's one of those catch-22. But I have had people to send, even though they got a rejection, some people still, you know, send them a thank you for the time for the interview. Because some companies might look back and say, you know what, I'm going to give them an opportunity, a chance. So that's basically up to you if you want to do that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Hi, Ms. Kirkwood. First of all, thank you very much for the information. I greatly appreciate it. Um, my question is, my previous employer um, will not allow you or their people to be used as references. Um, I have become friends with several people that were co-workers. Unfortunately, I was let go due to 9-11. I'm sorry, <laughs> I was let go due to COVID. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'm just wondering how you would recommend I handle the references in this case. Okay, so what you're saying, even though you are friends with them afterwards, you can't use them as a reference? That I'm not sure of. Um, I will obviously ask them to see if they're comfortable first, just like I would any other reference. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I do know that all the previous company will do is just ver verify that you worked there, but they won't give right. um, details about it. Right. And basically what happens on that, when you use them as a reference, they're going to call them. They're not going to call the company. They're going to call and talk to them personally. So, you know, if you're friends with them uh, afterward and you're no longer working there anymore and you built up a rapport with them, I think you could be able to use them. It's going to be based on them and saying, yes, you can use me for a reference. Because the company is only going to call them. They're gonna just call and ask them about you. Now, if you have previous um, employees that you worked with before, you can still ask them as a reference as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Anyone else? Just remember that all interviews are different and different people interview in different styles. The thing of it is, know the position that you're applying for, research the company and make sure that this is the product that you want to work for within that company and build up your confidence. Speak highly of yourself when you walk in there. You want to make sure that that company can depend on you because most companies, you're going to represent them and they're going to want you to represent them in a very high stage. So you want to make sure, oh, and another thing, be careful what you put on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and all of that, because some companies will go in and look at that information that you have on Facebook or Instagram, tweet, or whatever. You want to be careful what you put on their pictures. You want to make sure during your time of looking for work that you do not show anything that will hinder you from getting this job. Your emails need to be professional emails. Your voicemail needs to be professional. And you want to make sure that you uh, look up your email, go back in and check and see if anybody have sent you any notification and contact those people as soon as possible. But build your confidence up. Don't worry about the next person that's going in at the interview. You want them to know who you are. All right, if nothing else, thank you all for your time. I think Esmeralda put our information in the chat. You're welcome to contact myself and uh, es Esmeralda, and we will be more than happy to assist you any way we possibly can. Thank you all.